Hi there, I'm Dr. Christina Hibbert. Welcome back to our This Is How We Grow Personal Growth group. This is lesson five of season two. And our focus today is on the last step of that pyramid of self-worth we've been working on, which is actually the culmination of all those steps we talked about, which is feeling and experiencing your true self-worth and building on that to become the person that you want to be. That's what we're gonna talk about today. I hope that so far you've been able to receive and watch all the video lessons and then do some of the exercises I've suggested or maybe even all of them, that would be even better because I have designed them to help you in this process of understanding who you really are and as we move forward now, we're in the exciting part of figuring out who you want to become and what your mission and purpose and life's calling here is on this earth. So that's exciting. I know you've been waiting a while for this and we're already in lesson five and we haven't really gotten into our mission and purpose and all of those things yet, but we had to lay that foundation first of understanding our self-worth versus our self-esteem and being able to really understand our true value in order to then build on that to become the person that we want to be. So it's been really important work we've been doing so far. And just to remind you, we've worked through that pyramid of self-worth we started with self-awareness and then self-acceptance and last time self-love and today we talk about building on self-worth to reach your fullest potential. Now I'm really excited because as I'm recording this video, we have almost exactly four weeks until my new book, Who Am I Without You, comes out. And a lot of the lessons from this season have been based on some of the chapters from that book which I'm very excited about. It's already actually available for pre-order on not only Amazon and Barnes and Noble and newharbinger.com, who's my publisher, which they're wonderful, but also I found it on target.com. So talk about excited. I thought that was kind of silly that I was so excited about finding my book on target.com, but you know, that felt pretty cool. So you can check it out there too. In fact, I think Target had the cheapest price of all of them. Um, anyway, I hope you'll check that out and by the next video, I'm hoping to actually hold a copy of the book in my hand so I can show you. Um, right now I have the manuscript for the book right here. It's very thick looking. The book is not going to look this thick, but um, it's very exciting to see it all in print. So today we're going to work from one of the chapters on building your self-worth to reach your fullest potential. So let's jump in. I want to start with a quote by a man named John O'Donohue. He said, once the soul awakens, the search begins, and you can never go back. From then on, you are inflamed with a special longing that will never again let you linger in the lowlands of complacency and partial fulfillment. This perfectly sums up why we've waited so long to figure out all of this big stuff that we were supposed to be focusing on this year of our mission, our life's calling, our purpose, because we have to first awaken. We have to first understand who we really are and understand our true potential and worth in order to then have that longing that says, oh, now that I see all these wonderful things about me and I see the good, the bad, the ugly, and the exceptional, and I'm learning to accept that and feel it, well, I want to be even better than better, as I say. I want to become the person I'm meant to become, and I want to know what my mission and purpose and calling are so that I can fulfill them, right? So that's what he's talking about. We'll never again be okay to just, you know, say, okay, I'm just going to live my life. I don't really have goals or dreams. I don't really need to become anybody else. I don't think that we can do that once you start to really experience and feel that true worth and value that you have. So if you think about all the work you've done so far, I hope that you've been able to feel some of that, to really feel your self-worth to feel that love that your higher power that God has for you, to embrace it and let it fill you up, to see your true potential, to feel it in your bones. I hope you've had that experience. And even if it's only been this tiniest bit of feeling that, it's progress, okay? We don't have to suddenly feel like, oh my gosh, I completely love myself and I completely accept myself and I completely am aware of everything. No, it doesn't work like that. It's a process that lasts a lifetime, really. We keep repeating those steps. We keep repeating those steps. And for different qualities and different traits that come up, we go through those things, right? We are aware, we accept, we love it, and we let it go. We go keep going through those steps. But hopefully we're progressing 
you know, I don't want you to put all that pressure on yourself, but I do want you to pay attention and sort of look inside and say, am I able to feel some of my self-worth, even a glimmer of it? I hope you can, because that's what we've been working on for all these um, months so far, and today we're going to build on that. So obviously our life is here to change us, and we can, it's wonderful to embrace your true self-worth and to feel it and to live from a place of self-worth versus a place of low or high self-esteem or whatever that is, but to really feel confident and comfortable, to accept yourself, to love yourself, these kinds of things, that's very important. But the question is, now what? <laughs> who do you desire to become now? Now that you see who you are and some of the things that you like and don't like, and you've already worked on some weaknesses and strengths, hopefully, who do you want to become? Well, one of the most, the, the best ways that I've learned how to, to figure this out or to get started on it is to create your to-be list, T-O-B-E list. So we always have to-do lists. I don't know about you, but I tend to write down things, mostly minor do not forget this list because otherwise if I don't write it down or put a reminder on my phone, I'm probably going to forget. So, but you know, we always have these to-do lists each day, but do we have a to-be list? And isn't it really more important than our to-do list most of the time? Often our to-do list has things on there that we could probably skip. We probably don't have to do that day. We could probably do any other day, or maybe we just don't really need to do them at all. They really aren't crucial items. Sometimes there are some things that are really, really important, and obviously we have lots of things that we have to do each day that are important or are our responsibility no matter what. But do we work on our to-be list every day like we work on our to-do list? It's a good question to ask yourself. So to make a to-be list, some I've got some questions for you. So take note of these because this is going to help you create your to-be list. Number one, the question is, who do I desire to become? Ask yourself this, who, whom do I desire to become? So I suggest using your strengths and weaknesses list. You can use um, your I am exercise, the things that we've already gone through to see, you know, what things do you wish you had on those lists or that you wish you would have circled on the I am and felt really confident about? What things do you admire in other people? Because that helps you to understand what you probably wish for yourself. When you really, you know, feel either envious or um, inspired by somebody else in what they're doing, that might be something that you wish you could do too. So, and you probably have the potential. If you wish you could do it, you probably have that potential. We all do have that potential for most things. And we tend to be drawn to the things that we most desire and that are kind of laying latent inside of us. We just have to awaken it in order to get it going. So whom do I desire to become? Do you want to be more compassionate, more dedicated, more faithful? Do you want to be a better friend, a better daughter, a better partner or spouse? Um, do you have a challenge that you need to overcome? Is there something, a bad habit that's really driving you crazy and you realize now's the time you need to bump it up to that next level and do the next step. Um, recently, I've been working on that. And it's not that I feel like I've been bad or anything or that, or that it was even something that was a glaring bad habit. It's just that I realized that at this point in my life, I'm sort of being called to the next level for me. And I need to kind of step it up and commit at that next level in my personal life, in my spiritual life, <clears throat> in my family life. And so, you know, that might be what you're, what you want to become. You know that there's something that you need to become that you need to be working on. So write down all these things and, or write them in your phone or type them up, whatever you can do, but use your journal or notebook or your phone or your laptop or whatever you're using <clears throat> and write about who do you desire to become. Number two, whom do you not want to become? Okay, that's a good question too. <clears throat> Because it can obviously help us weed out the things that we really, really don't want for ourselves. And the truth is, a lot of times, if we focus on a lot of things that we don't want, we end up getting them anyway. So we don't want to focus too much on them. We just want to be aware of them. For, an, for, for instance, um, if your relationship has just ended, you maybe you don't want to end up being bitter about this loss in your life. 
Maybe you want to be able to be joyful despite the loss, these kinds of things, right? So what do you not want to become? Do you not want to become like so-and-so that you know who is terribly dishonest and you know you you don't want to be dishonest that's something that's really important to you to be honest so i want you to under, figure out what you don't want to be and then you can trade it into a this is what i want to be there for so if i don't want to be bitter <clears throat> therefore i want to be accepting joyful loving that kind of thing all right so that's number two number three and this goes back to an exercise i think i mentioned at the very beginning of these lessons which is what would you want your friends and family to say about you at your funeral? So go to your end of life and kind of imagine if it's the end of your life and think about what they would say about you now and then think about what you would want them to say about you. And, and it's probably going to be a little different. You know, I think I've shared that I did this exercise a few years ago and I, you know, I thought I was doing a really good job at that time. I was in my crazy times that I write about and this is how we grow. And, um, and I, but I kept thinking about and saying to my, not even saying to my kids, but the, my manners just was like, I'm sacrificing so much for everybody. Can't you guys see this? And I thought, you know, my kids are going to get to the end of my life and they're going to say, boy, our mom really sacrificed. And while I believe in sacrifice, I didn't want my kids to be thinking that, you know, I wanted them to think more positively that we had fun, that I was inspiring, that I taught them, that we laughed that I loved them, that I was compassionate to other people and I served, these kinds of things. So that can help you figure out more about who you want to become. So write all of these things down and keep adding to these lists as we go through the remainder of these lessons. These are gonna help you to figure out your life's mission and purpose and calling because the things you're drawn to, again, are your talents and they are the things that are going to be the foundation for why you're here on earth and what you're supposed to do. You know, I wouldn't be drawn to writing or talking like I do or speaking and I wouldn't love it and feel like I'm good at it if it weren't supposed to be part of my life's work and my life's mission here and it is clearly right okay so that's your to be list now once you have your to be list it's important to we're gonna we're gonna talk next time about how to start working on that and how to kind of formulate that into something you can actually do to get you there but I want you just to get started about thinking about who you want to become and that next stage of your growing with this self-worth and how you can kind of expand that self-worth into even more self-confidence and self-love. And, and then obviously that means love for others and love for God and love for everything around you. That that's really important in your becoming process. That the more you focus on love through everything that you do, the more you'll grow. I know I, I mentioned that a, a while back that our purpose really is about love in some form, whether it's about becoming more compassionate so that we're more loving or becoming um, you know a teacher so that we can help others that's loving or whether we are becoming better at music and we can inspire people with music and that is a loving act too so really it's all about love so focus on love when you're thinking about becoming and what you want to be and and your self-worth it's all tied together and we're going to kind of keep talking about that as we go but it's important to focus on another thing and that is believing in yourself. Now, you can feel your self-worth, but still have self-doubt. Of course, we all have self-doubt. I have self-doubt still about my writing, about, about my psychology work, and when I'm working with a client, can, am I going to be able to help them? You know, I still have self-doubt about my, you know, my books that come out. Are people going to like them? Am I going to, does anybody gonna even like this video? You know, these kinds of things. Um, and even about my, you know, my parenting and how I am with my family and did I handle that right? And oh, can I handle this situation with my kids right now or with my husband? So of course we have self-doubt, that's normal. I'm not saying you have to have no self-doubt, but what I'm saying is we need to work on that self-confidence and that belief in yourself. One way that a lot of people try to do this is by verbal affirmations. And I, I don't wanna say I, don't like verbal affirmations. What I want to say is that we need to move from affirmations to the truth. The problem with most affirmations and a lot of people and a lot of psychology out there, mental health, wellness, health stuff, all has to do with affirmations. And they are they can be very powerful, but, and there's a big but here, but only if we believe them. So a lot of people are out there 
affirming things to themselves or, or saying verbal affirmations that they don't believe that are given to them in a script and they just sort of say it and they want to believe it, but they really don't. And this is, again, goes back to that, how do you feel self-worth versus telling someone they need to improve their self-esteem. So, you know, this is important. We can work on these affirmations and work to believe them. Okay, so we have to base our affirmations on truth. So if, if I repeat something like, I am beautiful, I am courageous, I am over that guy that dumped me, you know, whatever it is, that's great if I believe it. If I'm really feeling my self-worth and I go, huh, I really am beautiful. You know, in my way, I am beautiful and I really am courageous. Look at all I've been able to tackle in my life and overcome. And, or I really am over that guy. You know, he, he really wasn't good for me and I see that now. That's very different from, I am beautiful, I am beautiful, I am beautiful, I am beautiful, I am courageous, I am courageous, you know. Um, so that's what we're kind of trying to figure out here. So how do we do that? How do we make that um, more realistic, those truths versus affirming truths to yourself versus verbal affirmations that are just sort of not, not believable to yourself, or at least not yet. So one thing is you can make a list of all the things that that you've learned so far that encourage you to believe in yourself. So this might be some of the things that you've seen on your strengths and weaknesses list, on your I am worksheet, um, some of the things that you've written about in your journal as we've been going through these lessons or other things you've seen in your life. What helps you to really believe in yourself? Okay, ask yourself that. What helps me believe in myself? What kinds of things sustain and, and support that? For me, my spiritual practice, um, meditation, prayer, scripture study, and doing that with my family, it helps me to feel my self-worth in a whole different way, in a deeper level, and it helps me to believe in myself. Um, and also sometimes, you know, things like getting out and trying and seeing that you can, even if you fail and fail, you can finally get that success and that can help you believe in yourself that, oh, okay, maybe I am kind of good at this, you know? Um, number two, pick five to 10 truths you find most helpful. So you might find things like, I am stronger than I feel, or um, I am a caring person. It's really one of my best strengths. Or I may feel afraid from time to time, but I face my fears. You know, find something true, and you can use your writings you've done so far. Go back and look. Look for true statements. Circle them. I really do believe this. You know, find whatever. Sorry, my dog's in here. Um, find whatever statement stands out most to you and something that you really can believe, and then circle that. And then you can use those 10 or so statements, five to 10 truths, as part of this new process of finding the true affirmations for yourself. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. My dog is making a lot of noise, or my daughter's dog. Anyway, then you can look through your list and select two or three statements that you most need to hear and most encourage you to believe in yourself right now. Okay, so once you get some of those true statements from the work you've already done that's already true, then you can pick one or two and focus on those. And then when the hard times come, you can pull those affirmations out and they will be true affirmations and not just verbal affirmations that really don't have a solid base. So you can say, you know, I am strong, I am capable, I know that I am because I did all this work to figure that out about myself and look at, I really feel that, I know that's true. Then you can do some things. You can write notes and put them on stickies in front of your mirror. Now, I love to do that when I'm working on something. I put, you know, a few a few months ago, I was work. I was trying to kind of keep my inner space clear and clean so that I didn't let a lot of distractions in because it was overwhelming me and it was making me really exhausted. And so I put a little sticky note up on my on my bulletin board where I work, and it says, um, you know, how, what does it say? Protect your inner space. You know, so something like that. So something that you need to hear, something that, um, or, or I would say, to make that more of an affirmation, you would say, I will protect my inner space. You know, that I believe that I will do that. So that's an even better way to say it. So put some mirrors up, or, or some mirrors up, put some notes up around the house or on the fridge, if that's a good place for you, because we go there often, um, in the bathroom, somewhere where you'll see it often. Or make it the screensaver of your phone. My husband's really good at that. He'll take a picture of something, that he's working on a little statement or something and he'll have it on a screensaver and that's a really great idea. Then you can read those affirmations each day and you can set aside a time in the morning and at night to read those and to remind yourself that you really do believe that 
and it helps you to just reinforce it for yourself and remember that you already believe it and help you to believe in yourself. You can also put a little card with your confirmation and carry it in your pocket or something and pull it out throughout the day or again, set a reminder on your phone to pop up and tell you that affirmation so that you're reminded throughout the day. Or have someone else write down some affirmations for you, some things that they know to be true about you, that they believe in you. That can be very powerful. I love that exercise where when you're in a group and you pass around the paper and one's for each person and we each write down one thing that we love about that person. And that can be a really powerful exercise. So if you have an in-person group, maybe do that so that you have a whole list of things that other people see in you and admire in you and, and believe in you. Okay? So those are the steps that we're going to take today. And that, that about sums up our lesson today. As you can see, it's there's a lot to do today. There's a lot of um, suggestions for activities and exercises. But that's because we're really in an action stage right now. We need to work on becoming and we, we've worked on overcoming. That's what we worked on so far. Now we're working on becoming. And then at the end of the season, we'll be working on flourishing. And really, they all kind of bleed into each other. But focus on who you want to be. Focus on your to-be list. Focus on making sure that you do the work that it takes to get you where you want to be. Because this is the first step in really understanding your life's mission, your life's purpose, your calling, however you want to say it and fulfilling that, which to me is the ultimate flourishing in life. When you know you're doing that, it you can't stop yourself from feeling love and joy in such greater amounts than you can imagine. And um, I know that to be true for sure. So until next time, let me read you a little quote here. Uh, it's right here. Very simple, <laughs> very simple quote by Andy Offutt Irwin, don't be afraid to be amazing. Don't be afraid to be amazing, okay? When you're thinking about who you're gonna be, who you want to become, let yourself dare to dream that you could be amazing and that you already are, you just maybe don't know it yet. Or maybe you do know it, but you just don't know it for something else. Um, but don't be afraid to be amazing. That's what this is all about. We're about to see how amazing you really are and how much you really have in your potential and um, I'm excited for the months to come. It's going to be a really great ride. So stick with me and join me on my website at drchristinahibbert.com for more tools and tips and related articles and, um, and other things that can help you, blog posts that can help you with what you're working on. And also, I want to tell you there's, uh, in case you didn't see, you can join up for free and get the 30-day personal growth plan. And this is, a, this is how we grow 30-day personal growth plan. And it has an, an easy-to-download quick guide that gives you the whole 30 days of what you're going to be working on. And then each day you'll get an email from me with a little lesson on what you can do for that day. And it is different. Some of it kind of overlaps with what we've been doing here, but it's not exactly the same. And it goes a little more into specifics and gives you a lot of written exercises you can work on if you like that sort of thing. Or you can not if you don't. Um, so check that out because like I said, that's a free gift I'm giving away on my website at drchristinahibbert.com. All right, until next time, may you believe in yourself and don't be afraid to be amazing because you are. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.